I want to bring in business reporter Alexis Christophorus, astrophysicist Akeem Alusei, and aviation analyst John Nance. All are joining me now to talk about this. And John, let's start with you. Can you explain what we're seeing here? This is history. And orient us. It is history, and uh, I'm envious. <laughs> Uh, being an aviator my entire life, this is a magnificent flight. It, it's short because this is suborbital. It just goes up and comes down. But they've just passed the perigee, or the uh, apogee, rather, at uh, almost 89 kilometers. And uh, it's been very successful in terms of the drop, the ignition of the engine, and uh, the powering up to that altitude. Uh, now we see the, the tail flipped up, basically the, uh, the feather, as they call it. And that's one of the most brilliant designs here of this thing, is the fact that it can, it can take the... Um, the buildup of uh, speed and, and attenuate it so that they don't have a heat problem in terms of reentry. It's really incredible how far we've come and, you know, that we're able to now put civilians into space. Akeem, let's move over to you. And what kind of forces are the passengers being subjected to right now? Well, believe it or not, they're still subjected to gravity, but they're in the process of falling. So you're weightless, right? So, you know, you only feel your weight if there's something under your feet. And I think what they're really being subjected to, based on the looks of their faces, is w wonder and awe. I mean, this is amazing. And I can imagine, right, what do you do? Do you look at space? Do you look at the Earth? It seems like they've clearly chosen to look at the Earth. I've never had the experience, but it looks absolutely wonderful. It really does. Just to see Earth from that, that vantage point uh, would really change your life, John. But you always wonder about the safety uh, in these instances. What safeguards are in place in case something goes wrong? Going to be, uh, well, there are a lot of backup systems. I mean, there's some that you can't really, can't really have a backup system for, and that is the cabin pressure because they're not wearing spacesuits. But, but this is a very, very carefully engineered craft, and uh, it's passed just a myriad of tests in the past, not just being shot up into uh, orbit once before, not into orbit, but suborbit, but also the fact that, uh, that the FAA has been hand and glove with them the whole way. I don't think there's uh, any anything that hasn't been done to assure that not only in terms of flight control, but in terms of life support, uh, everything is backed up as far as it possibly can be. This is pioneering, though. we got to keep that in mind. This is pioneering. This is the beginning, the very beginning of regularly scheduled space service, if you will, uh, to at least near orbit. That it is. This is pioneering, absolutely. But let's bring in Alexis Christophorus now. We can't ignore the dollar signs here for Virgin Galactic. Something like this is not cheap. How much did this cost for the passengers, Alexis? Not cheap is right. You have to have deep pockets there to go to the edge of space. And, you know, not a lot of people know this, but Virgin Galactic has been around for about 20 years, and they were promising flights into space like this back in 2007. That was probably a little too aggressive on their part. But back then, a seat on this plane would have cost you $200,000. Today, that seat is $450,000. And they have about 800 passengers on on a wait list who want to, you know, be part of this once in a lifetime experience, but it's out of reach for so many people, right? And the hope, of course, is that it is a brand new technology. And as time goes on, uh, things will hopefully get less expensive. And, and I don't think it's going to be the, you know, how much it is to take like a flight to California from New York, but it, it'll come down from that sky high price right now. Uh, it is sky high indeed. Um, let's Let's get over to John now. Uh, John, after the ship hits its peak, what happens next? Well, it's essentially a glider at that point. It's not powered. So the uh, the crew, after they uh, get down low enough, uh, will put the tail back in the normal position, the feather, in other words, and uh, they are fo following a very precise glide path. This is not quite as steep an angle as the space shuttle used to use because it came down at a very high uh, rate of speed in terms of feet per minute. But it's the same principle because it's an unpowered glider at this point. And coming back to the spaceport from which it left as a uh, uh, a, a companion to the uh, the mothership, so to speak, and that is a well-used phrase, but it's true. Um, so what you're seeing right now is basically close-up of the ship as it uh, is being glided down to a landing. And, John, the FAA had previously launched an investigation into a mishap that occurred during a flight in 2021 with founder Richard yep. Branson. Now, the FAA did clear Virgin Galactic to resume flight shortly after that, but what kind of hurdles did this flight have to cross? Well, I think two principal hurdles. One, of course, is the 
technical. The FAA has to approve it if this goes through uh, uh, FAA jurisdictional airspace, and uh, and we're pioneering in that element as well as to who controls what. Uh, secondly, though, and most importantly, if this is going to be available to the public, and it will be, uh, every possible thing that needs to be done should be done uh, and, and has to be done well. And, and so they opened up the entire process in terms of uh, what had happened. Now, the, the deviation was one of the flight path coming back, uh, and that had to do with high winds and had to do with an explanation from Virgin Galactic uh, uh, that really was not a threat to the ship as such, but it looked like it, and it was a very appropriate uh, investigation. John Nance, Hakeem Alusei, and Alexis Christophorus, thank you so much as we watch history being made. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.